Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is part one of the Swoon Carter Messenger Bag Sew Along. And if you watched last week's videos, you will know that I did the sew along for the uh, jumpsuit tracksuit that I am wearing now. And usually I would change. I am obviously batch filming, but I decided not to because clearly this month there is a color theme going on. So this is the Carter Messenger Bag by Swoon Patterns and I absolutely love it. I was a bit worried when I first made it that it was gonna be a little bit small when I was cutting out the pattern pieces, I was thinking, I like this bag, I like the style, but I'm probably gonna need to make it bigger. But I have been using it for the last couple of weeks, and whilst it is smaller than the Celine bag that I usually use, I am loving this. I am planning on making myself a different wallet to go inside, but my necessary clutch wallet does fit in there along with my hairbrush. I'm using this middle section as my makeup bag because my makeup bag does not fit in here. I have hairbrush, glasses case, I have my little, what I'm using as my earphone case from Studio 71 tucked in there. And I can also get my vlog camera in here as well at the same time as my phone and it closes. So this bag is absolutely gorgeous. When it first came out, it was part of the Carried Away Bag Club, I think I've got that right. And immediately that I saw it, I bought it and I was just like, I need to make that, it's stunning. Then I kind of decided that I wanted to do it for a retreat. So this is the bag that the October KB Retreat Peeps are sewing. Now, this is the first time I've made this and actually there are a few little tweaks that I would make to it. The first one is I added purse feet. And I probably would have added two more if I'd have had them in my stash, but mum very kindly had made me a bag the following week, or the previous weekend or the previous week, and I didn't have any more of the right colour in my stash. So I've added four, but the retreat peeps are getting six. And I'm also going to, this has only got the fusible fleece in it, and I'm, I'm going to uh, add a couple of layers of Decoville for the bottom, just because I kind of like a structured bag. Although to be fair, this does stay like this. It hasn't been sagging at the bottom. The other thing that I changed slightly was that I used the strap keepers from Emmeline Bags. And whilst they are one inch strap keepers, they, and these straps do fit through them, because this is vinyl and quite chunky, they are, it's actually quite a snug fit and it's not a very easy thing to just put them in. I don't think that detracts from the beauty of the bag. I, as I say, have been using this, but when I will do the sew along, I will tell you guys that we need to cut these down a little bit and make these so that they are three quarters of an inch wide so that they easily fit through, or seven eighths of an inch wide if you are using a fabric. So part one is going to be the cutting guide. Let's get started. For this sew along, you will need your pattern, your fabric, I'm using the same fabric for all parts, but if you would like a contrast and an exterior fabric, you will need one of each. Lining fabric, matching thread, two three quarter inch D-rings, two one inch swivel clasps, two one inch rectangular rings. If you're gonna follow along with me, you'll also want purse feet. I have six domed purse feet. Two magnetic snaps. Another deviation is strap keepers, so I have two one inch strap keepers. Fabric scissors, paper scissors, wonder clips, marking tool of choice, an awl, fray check, quilting ruler, double cap rivet, a small Phillips head screwdriver, I have an entire set. Interfacing, I'm using Pelon SF101, you need the same or similar. And fusible fleece, I'm using Violin H630. You're also gonna need an ironing board, sewing machine, and some tape. So to get started with cutting out, the first thing you're going to need to do is print out your pattern. I have printed mine in color. I like to do that because they have a, a code here for which side of the fabric you should be seeing. And they also have a where to stitch guide, which is in red. And then some of the ones where they have, uh, where you've been previously stitching, they have it in gray. So it is color coded and so stepwise. So I do like to have mine printed out in color. I would recommend that you do that if you can. The other thing that you want to make sure that you're doing is you're printing at 100% that there's no scaling on your um, printer when you're printing this out don't print from your phone or your tablet you want to print from a laptop or a computer phones and tablets can for some reason screw with the uh, scaling even if you put it to 100% so print it out from your com computer or from your laptop and you want to double check your square which I've done here so you can see this is meant to be two inches 
and it is two inches. You do need this to be precise. When you become more acquainted with bag sewing and you feel more comfortable with bag sewing, you can alter the percentage size of your pattern pieces to make your scale or bag up to be larger or smaller. That will then mean that this is irrelevant. But for, for this tutorial and for this sew along and for this retreat, we are going to be sewing it as is, the pattern recommends. So you wanna make sure that your test box is two inches square. The other thing that I've done is I've actually printed out two sets of the pattern pieces themselves because where it says to cut on a fold I actually like to put the two pieces together so that I have one entire piece so that I don't have to cut anything on the fold. I'm going to be making my bag out of either leather or vinyl and I don't want to have folded that because the material will retain a memory of the crease that I have put in so I like to have my pattern pieces full size so that nothing needs to be cut on the fold. So if you cut if you print out two of your sets of pattern pieces you cut them out and then you can stick them together and I'm going to show you how to do that now. So one thing that I recommend is that for one set of your pattern pieces you leave yourself a nice long lip and then for the other set of pattern pieces you cut it out completely. What I'm going to do is work my way through the first set of pattern pieces and leave myself a lip on everything that has a fold line on it and then I'm going to work my way through the second pattern pieces and I'm going to cut everything out completely and that way I know that I've got a lip on one and no lip on the other so they'll be easy to stick together. So I have my set here that has the extra lip on it. Some of the pieces because of the positioning of them you will only have a small lip, some of them you will have a much larger one. I have the pieces here that you're only going to need to cut out the once, so the handle connector, vinyl snap tab, woven snap tabs and the main panel accent, you only need to cut those out once because they're not on the fold so I've done that but I wanted to show you that you don't need to cut those out. And then I have the rest of the pieces with the fold line on it cut out completely so that I can overlap the edges here and stick them together to make one whole pattern piece. So I'm going to get that done now. Okay, so I have my zipper pocket panel there and I have its corresponding piece here. So I'm going to take the one that I've cut out completely and I'm going to overlap it on to the fold line, making sure that everything is nice and straight. And I'm going to tape that down and I'm going to make sure my tape goes right to the top and to the bottom of my pattern piece and there I have a full pattern piece that doesn't that no longer needs to be cut on the fold and we're going to need to cut two of those and then two woven interfacing for those and it tells you how many you need to cut of each piece on the pattern piece itself so I'm going to repeat this process for the rest of my pattern pieces and then we can start cutting out some fabric should have something that ends up looking like this. So we have our main panel fleece and I have one entire piece here so I can just cut the two of the entirety rather than two on the fold. We've got the bottom panel and so on and so forth for all of the pieces that had the fold line on them. The only pieces that you won't have done this to are the handle connector, the woven snap tab, or the vinyl snap tab, and obviously you'll only need to cut one set of these depending on what fabric you're using, and your main panel accent. Okay, so I'm gonna start cutting out my pattern pieces. I am using this faux leather or vinyl that I got from Textile Express. In fact, uh, the lovely Susie bought this from Textile Express and she's allowed me to keep the excess. I've made her an NCW out of it. As you can see, there's a kind of cut lines up there. I am going to take my pattern pieces and I'm going to lay them down onto the wrong side of the fabric and I'm going to trace around them and I'm going to use this white chalk marker that I have here which does show up. This one I'm going to make sure I need to keep it sharpened because I want to keep as accurate a trace as possible. When I'm cutting that out I'm going to be cutting on the trace lines that I make because obviously the trace lines are going to be on the exterior of the pattern piece and I need it to be the size of the pattern piece. So I'm going to get them all traced out and I'm going to te pattern tetris them as best I can. Once they're all traced out I can then start cutting them out and there is a list there's obviously all the pattern pieces that you need to trace out but there's also a list of pattern pieces for the handles and connectors and things like that so we're going to trace those or get those marked onto this vinyl as well. As you can see here I have traced around all of my pattern pieces and I have then drawn the 
straight pattern pieces that the pattern actually asks you for. So there's a handle, closure strap, shoulder strap. We're not making the strap holders because I am using hardware for strap holders for this tutorial. And then strap connectors and the zipper tabs is going to be out of the lining fabric and I've not come to that yet. I'm also doing a wrist strap just because there was that piece of uh, fabric that's the right size to fit a wrist strap in. So I always try and cut one of those out if I have spare vinyl. You can see that I've done dashed lines down the center of some of these pieces. This is the shoulder strap. This is the closure strap and they're going to be going to need to fold the raw edges in to meet the center line so I just find it easier to mark the center line in whilst I'm doing all this and I do it as a dashed line so that I don't accidentally cut it so I'm now going to cut all these pieces out and as I say I'm going to cut on the chalk line because I have traced around my pattern pieces if you're working with fabric you'll obviously be able to pin your pattern pieces to your fabric so you you again will be just cutting around all of those. Obviously you can't pin with vinyl, so I have traced all of my pattern pieces. So I'm gonna get these cut out. And one thing I'm gonna say now is get yourself some scrap paper, get yourself some wonder clips if you're using vinyl or if you're using fabric, get yourself some pins. When you've cut your pattern piece out, make a note of what that pattern piece is and clip it or pin it to those pattern pieces so that you don't get confused later because as you can see we've got some very similar looking pieces here so that is my advice for whenever you make bags is always label each of the bag pieces you will thank me later ask me how I know if you are taking a course from me in person you will not have your foam or your interfacing yet don't worry about that if you're following along with the online sew along you need to have all of these pieces cut out so the first thing I have here is two of the fleece main panel so main panel fleece cut two fleece interfacing done that next we have a side panel fleece two fleece interfacing cut those next we have flap panel fleece cut one fleece interfacing done that next we have bottom panel fleece cut one fle fleece interfacing one of those now we're moving on to our lining so zipper pocket panel cut two lining and two woven interfacing so I have two lining and two of the Pellon SF101. We have zipper tabs and this is the other lining fabric that I'm using and I have two of these and they are one inch by two inches and the measurement for this is in the pattern. Next we have the lining panels and we've got four lining and four woven interfacing. So I have one, two interfacing, one, two, three, four for li uh, lining fabric and then another two interfacing, so four of each. These are the scraps of vinyl that I have left over and I'm going to use these to play around with my top stitching uh, length to work out what I like and what looks best and make a note of that and then use the, that top stitching length for the rest of the bag as we make it. I have woven snap tab uh, connectors here and I've cut four of my contrasting fabric now technically I should have used the vinyl one but for the vinyl one they want you to leave the edges raw so I'm going to attempt and see if I can make it work with these and if I can't then I can cut them down and use the vinyl ones so you want four of those if you're using fabric you're going to need four interfacing as well so the rest of these are all vinyl for me and I am not cutting any interfacing out for these if you're using fabric you will be cutting out interfacing for all of these pieces as well next we have our closure straps I have also marked down the center point of these because we will be needing to fold the raw ed edges in to meet the center point. Next, I have my side panel. Now, I'm making my entire bag out of the same fabric, so this is my contrasting and my exterior fabric. I will point out when you should have exterior fabric when we come to those pieces. Side panel, cut two contrasting. So I have two of those, and again, no interfacing because I'm using vinyl. Next, we have the shoulder strap. The pattern calls for you to cut it 24 inches by 4 inches and again I've marked the center point. I've actually added another 6 inches onto mine so mine is 30 inches long because I do like a long shoulder strap. I'm going to attempt it at this length and see how that comes out and obviously I will report back and let you know what I think. Next we have the bottom panel, one co uh, contrasting and one of the woven interfacing and again I'm using vinyl so I have just cut that. We have the main panel accent, cut to contrasting two interfacing again i have just cut the two contrasting and again i have marked on the center point because we'll be folding the raw edges in to meet that center point i also cut myself a wrist strap which is 12 inches by three inches and that i have a tutorial on how to make these wrist straps i had a decent sized piece of vinyl that would fit one of those in and i like a matching wrist strap for my keys for whichever bag i'm using 
Next we have the handle connector. So I've got two contrasting and they're 2.5 inches by two inches. And again, no interfacing for me because I'm using vinyl. We've got the strap connectors and we've got two which are 1.5 inches wide and three inches long. I think I messed up and I drew two of them out. So I've got the two that are three inches long by 1.5 inches wide. And then I've got one that's six inches long by 1.5 inches wide. And I've kept it just in case I mess up on these ones. So I won't need to cut that piece again. And again, I've marked the center on so that we can fold it in easily later next we've got the handle which is one of those and it's 16 inches by two inches and again i've marked the center we've got the flat panel i've cut one exterior fabric and i'm actually going to use my vinyl as my lining for this as well i'm hoping that's going to work if not i shall come back and cut a lining panel out if you're using vinyl and an exterior fabric we are coming to the parts where this would be your exterior fabric so again i'm using vinyl for the entirety of my bag if you're using a exterior fabric you should have one of these flat panels in exterior fabric, one in lining, and then two woven interfacing. And finally, we've got the main panel. So again, if you're using an exterior fabric and a contrasting fabric, this will be cut two of your exterior and two of the woven interfacing. And again, I'm using vinyl, so I am just got the two pieces. So that is all the pattern pieces that you should have cut out and ready so that we can move on to construction. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comments section down below and I will do my best to answer them for you. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I will see you again very soon. Bye!